G'day DIY Paul Legends. Today we're going to be talking about two things that are really straightforward when you ask installers about uh, how easy they are to put in, but they do stump a lot of people. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is a hydrostatic valve. So what is it and why is it there? So the Australian Standards Clause 3.4 tells us that the hydrostatic valve needs to be fitted to a fiberglass pool if it's being installed in Australia. So what does it do? The main job of the hydrostatic valve is to allow water that's building up underneath the pool once it gets to a certain pressure, the valve pops open and the water that's under the pool will flow into the swimming pool itself. So the main reason for that is to prevent the pool from trying to move upwards or floating or being displaced upwards or causing some deflection in the pool walls because you've got pressure. So hydrostatic, meaning water, pressure building up underneath the pool and around the pool. So the valve is there to do that. It's to let water into the pool. It's not to let water out of the pool. A lot of people do get a little bit confused with this and confuse it with a main drain that goes into a concrete pool. The main drain in a concrete pool is then connected by pipework back to the filter or some other part of the filtration to allow the pool to be drained. Definitely not what a hydrostatic valve is there to do. So this is what a hydrostatic valve looks like. It basically looks like a bath plug, doesn't it? But it does a very different job. It's designed to let water come into the pool, as we said, not stop water from going out. However, if you don't install it properly, then you might have some unwanted water going out of your pool and otherwise known as a leak, and we don't want that either. But you can see the spring that is inside. It's a very simple mechanism. The pressure underneath the pool gets to a point there it's enough to push that spring up which opens the top of the valve and allows water to flow into your pool and releases that groundwater pressure that is sitting underneath the pool and wanting to push it up out of the installation. A couple of things to note here so the thread for the hydrostatic valve we ask our manufacturer to fit it to the pool for all of our diy pool customers that way it makes it very easy it's not always fitted as you can see in this photo and the valve goes into the deepest part of the pool usually in the middle so look in the australian standards of some good diagrams that show you where the valve should be located and it also shows you what it should look like underneath the pool most important part there is that it isn't connected to any pipe work underneath the pool. So it is free draining. The water's got to be able to come into the pool. It can't do that if you connect pipe work to it. So that's not the idea of the valve. The other part that a lot of people ask questions about uh, of installers is, do I need to create a sump underneath the hydrostatic valve? A lot of installers, a lot of the bigger pool manufacturers, when they're installing pools, will put the hydrostatic valve straight into the bedding material underneath the pool. If you're using a really fine bedding material like crusher dust, then it's a good idea to put some mesh or geotech mesh underneath where the valve is going to go. So that way, if the valve does open, and bear in mind, 90 out of 100 people are going to own pools for 20 years and never see that valve open. If it does then open and when it, the pressure drops, the, the opening on the valve will drop back down. You don't want to have a fine layer of silt or crusher dust sitting in the seat of the valve. So the top or the lid doesn't close properly and you have a very slow leak. So a little bit of geotech mesh never goes astray. Some people do build a bit more of a sump underneath the hydrostatic valve. Refer to the Australian standards. It points out what you need to do depending on the type of bedding material that you have and also the type of ground that you're putting the pool and the bedding material into. So let's get stuck into what it looks like to fit a hydrostatic valve to a fiberglass pool. So a bit of a grubby pool, overnight rains, all the dirt got uh, washed up and around the valve. But first thing that you can see the installer doing here is using a screwdriver to loosen up the bedding material that is directly underneath the hydrostatic valve and the thread that it is gonna be uh, going into. If 
it is any dirt, then just make sure that the thread is nice and clean. You don't want anything in there that's going to cross thread the valve or not allow it to screw in properly. Installers will take the O-ring off the hydrostatic valve and use silicon instead. Main reason for that is fiberglass pools are man-made and you don't always get a perfectly flat floor on the bottom of the pool and you might just have a slight imperfection so the valve doesn't seal 100% waterproof when it does screw into the surface of the fiberglass pool so once you've got the o-ring off if you are taking it off then always a good idea to screw the valve in and just make sure that the threads work between the two and it goes in and out and it is nice and clean next step after that grab yourself some silicon a lot of people use sikaflex and put a bead of silicon around the top of the thread on the valve Main purpose for this is to make sure that when the valve bites into the top of the pulled surface that it is going to be completely waterproof and you're not going to have any leaks of water coming out of the pool into the backfill. Definitely not what you want to do. So put a decent amount of silicone around that thread. You don't want to be shy with that. It's better to have too much than not enough. So you can see here the installer just running a finger around that bead of silicon to smooth it off and then it is as straightforward as screwing it into the thread put it into finger tight and then grab yourself a screwdriver a straight edge screwdriver you'll see the lug and then you want to turn it around until it does bind and then it's just a couple of wax to to get it around it's, it's not even a quarter turn if you see what the installer's done there it doesn't need to be superman tight and then give it a nice clean off a wipe off with a rag and that's it you're done your hydrostatic valve is installed with a bit of luck you'll never see that top part of that valve pop open for as long as you open the pool but if you do then you'll be very very happy that you've got that valve there and it's doing its job okay so the next mystery item that does stump a lot of people is the standpipe so clause 6.2.6 .6 in the australian standards tells you what the standpipe's there for and it's got a pretty good diagram of what it looks like as well main reason for the standpipe is for you to know how much water is around the pool particularly important when you're backfilling you never want the pool water to be lower than the water that's around the pool so you're constantly checking your standpipe during the installation and two if you have a lot of rain or there's something else and you notice that or you're worried that there's groundwater building up and around your pool and you need to start pumping it out then you can drop a submersible pump down that standpipe and start discharging all of that groundwater that's around your pool before it turns into a problem like the hydrostatic valve they're actually super straightforward there's nothing overly complicated about it you're going to grab a 65 mil piece of standard class 9 pvc pipe and it's going to be fitted to the deep end of the pool most installers will put it next to the skimmer box so that way it's out of the way the most important part is make sure that that length of pvc pipe that you have is going to be long enough where it can get all the way down to the deep end of the pool the deepest part and it's going to go into the bedding by about 10 mil always easier to cut the pipe if it's a little bit too long than it is to add on extensions or have to start again so first thing that you need to do and this is all in the Australian standards as well is that you need to what they call perforate or score the pipe so in other words you're going to cut slots into that bottom 500 mil of the pipe it can always be more and that's going to allow water then to drain into the pipe and you can get an accurate measurement of the level of water that is around your pool if you don't put those slots in, then the water won't get into your standpipe. You're going to get a false reading. You might think that you don't have any groundwater around your pool and it's getting perilously high and potentially going to cause you a huge problem. So certainly, even if you have free draining soil where groundwater is not going to be a huge issue, the standpipe, if you ever need it, is going to be something you'll be very, very happy that you've spent the 20 minutes putting it in. Uh, rather than trying to solve a problem down the track of getting groundwater out when you don't have a standpipe. Once you've scored the standpipe, then putting it down into the bedding, just twist the pipe back and forth so the bottom 10, 15 mil of the pipe goes into the bedding. That way you know that the water will come up under the bedding and go into the pipe and give you an accurate reading. 
once you've done that, then while you're backfilling, then take the pipe to the coping of the pool so that way it's not going to move. And that's pretty much it, you're done. Um, when it's time for paving and it's time to uh, get everything level with the skimmer box, then the standpipe needs to have a removable lid. So a lot of people will just cut out a piece of paving or a piece of the uh, exposed aggregate as a little square, almost like a square drain that you see in showers these days. So that way, if you do need to access that standpipe, you can get to it. That's all that you need to do. It doesn't need to be plumbed into anything else. It's just straight into the ground and it is there to again, help you while you're backfilling the pool when you're first installing the pool and then down the track, make sure you can clear away any of the groundwater that is building up around your pool if it's becoming a problem. So you're done. There's your hydrostatic valve and your standpipe. So it's not too tricky, uh, much easier when you can see it and, and understand it and not so much of a mystery. So if you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. We're keeping on adding videos. Please let us know if you've got ideas for future videos that we can record for you. Thanks so much for watching DIY Pool Legends. All the best with your installation and happy swimming.